Hey everybody, welcome to Solo Growth Part 5. In this video I'm introducing technology growth in the Solo Growth Model. Uh, and this is really important to us for a couple of reasons, well for one main reason. In the previous models, when we threw in population growth, we were able to show how the total output of an economy could grow over time even in the steady state. But what we didn't show was a rise in standard of living, where the individuals in the country get richer over time. Uh, we're going to throw in some population growth to let our people get rich. So, previously, this was our production function, f of k and l. And then it was constant returns to scale, so we divided everything by l to make little f of little k. It was great. If you haven't watched those videos and you don't know what I'm talking about, you should probably go back. Now, though, we're augmenting it. We're adding this E here. E is an efficiency measure. We're assuming that we're throwing in some technology that can augment the efficiency of our labor. It can make our workers get more stuff done. So L doesn't have to change, but how efficient L is can change. And so this is our new baby. Now population growth rate is still in and we have a rate of labor augmenting technological progress It's our technology growth rate G. Alright I think we're ready for this now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make little y be equal to big Y over EL. It's output per efficient worker uh, or I guess effective worker I don't know it depends on how you want to say it whatever and we're gonna have a little k which is equal to big K over effective labor and because we have constant returns to scale we have that y is equal to some function f of little k and that's it we divided everything by EL, the EL cancels out of the equation altogether, and we get that stuff. Now, if this were Cobb-Douglas, then it'll probably still look something like this, where Y is equal to little k to the alpha, uh, with these definitions of Y and K. That's if it's Cobb-Douglas, we don't have to have that, but I'll stick with it for this video. Now. Uh, as always in these growth models, we're interested in the very long run, so we're interested in the steady state. And so we should look at the evolution of capital. Change in capital per effective worker is equal to some savings rate times F of K minus delta, I think delta plus N plus G K. Now, keep in mind here, when I added... When I did not have population growth or efficiency growth, neither of those terms were there. It was just delta K. When I added population growth, that term wasn't there. But now I'm adding a second kind of growth, and so it's there too. We need to have capital replenishing faster to keep up with our economy if our economy is growing faster. And so that's why all those growth rates are associated here. Now in the steady state, we set the change in capital equal to zero. So we get S F of K equals delta plus N plus G times K. Now the graph still looks familiar. It's still something like this. We have investment. We have capital per effective worker. There's still this curve S F of K. And there's this curve which is delta plus n plus g all times k. There's your steady state. None of that stuff's changed, but something interesting has changed. If we look at our steady state growth rates of individual variables, we can see why adding the technology matters to our model. If we look at capital per effective worker, which is k equals k over E times L, this thing has a steady state growth rate of zero. If we look at output per effective worker, which is Y over E times L, which is also called F little f of little k, 
this thing has a steady state growth rate of zero. But our output per worker, which is just Y over L, this is the one that sort of measures, this is our like GDP per capita or something. This is our aggregate measure of well-being. Well, this sucker is equal to little y times e, and it grows at a rate of g. So, what happens here? Our steady state now has, has a growth rate for output per worker. Our people will be better off over time, even in the steady state. And that's what the solo model was missing before, and that's what it has now when we throw all this stuff in. Let's see, last little comment, if you were looking for the golden rule stuff, meaning the steady state that maximizes consumption, you would just set your marginal product of capital equal to delta plus n plus g. So what is the MPK? I told you earlier that we were going to assume that y, oops, sorry, y was equal to f of k, which was k to the alpha. That was way back up here when I assumed a Cobb-Douglas starting point. Uh, well, from this, mpk is equal to f prime of k, which is equal to alpha k to the alpha minus 1. And that is set equal to delta plus n plus g. That is the equation that will give us the level of capital to maximize consumption, our golden rule level of capital. So all we gotta do now is solve for k. This is alpha over k to the one minus alpha equals delta plus n plus g. And where alpha is smaller than one, one minus alpha is a much nicer exponent to work with. So I'm going to move that piece over I'm going to divide both sides by delta plus n plus g. And multiply both sides by k to the 1 minus alpha. And I get this. And then I can mess with my exponents. And there's my golden rule level of capital. Uh, notice the faster our technological growth, making our laborers more effective, the less capital we need. Uh, basically, the more of any kind of growth we have, the less capital we need to maximize consumption. I don't know. I'll let you figure it out based on whatever your teacher asks you, but there's the math of it. You have officially solved for the golden rule level of capital in a Cobb-Douglas model with, in, with technological progress. I know it was very exciting for you, and I hope it was useful. If not, too bad. Don't waste any more time. Get to work. Thanks for watching, guys, and good luck.